So let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 8. So our lesson, our gospel today is found in Acts chapter 8. And then we will begin at verse 35 to 40. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, so that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azutus, and passing through, he preached in all the cities, still he came to Caesarea. May God bless the reading from His holy word. Please take your seats. So we continue with our series, Who's Your One? Right? And we are in the middle of this campaign. What is this Who's Your One campaign? This is our main evangelistic campaign of reaching out others for Jesus. Now, we have to understand, brethren, that if you call yourself a Christian, all right, how many here call themselves a Christian? Raise your hand. All right? Okay, praise God. At least almost all of us raise our hands. So, if, if we call ourselves a Christian, if we are Christians because we have a relationship with Jesus, because Jesus is our Savior, we have a spiritual and a moral responsibility. And what is that? To tell others about Jesus. Amen? We are not supposed to, to hoard Jesus Christ to ourselves. We are to share Him. You see, Jesus is the most wonderful thing that could happen to a person. I don't know if you believe that with all your heart. But for me, He is the most wonderful thing that has ever happened in my life. Jesus makes a difference between me going to hell and me going to heaven. It's Jesus. Amen? Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. The good news is that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He came to save. He came to die. Now, what are we supposed to do with that wonderful truth? We are to share that to someone. Amen? And that is why we have this campaign, and we are joining this global campaign called Who's Your One? Right? There are more than 8 billion people in the world today. If the world will end tomorrow... Out of those 8 billion, who are you going to save? Who's your one? Right? That's the concept. It's like, you don't have to think about the big numbers. You just have to think about one person, one person each month that you want to show the love of Jesus. Right? So that's the concept of our each one, reach one each month. So each month, each one of us, we are to focus on one person. All right, a friend, a relative, right, a family member, a colleague, someone that you care, someone that you want to share the best thing of life. All right, so that's our campaign, Who's Your One? And in, in this campaign, there are four steps to accomplish this. All right, just want to make this easy. There are four steps to do this. So we say the first step is to pray. Are you following? So that's the first step. The first step in telling someone that Jesus Christ loves you, that Jesus died for you, is that to, you pray for that someone. Okay, why do we start with prayer? Because prayer prepares the heart of that person. Right? The first step to evangelism, the first step to sharing the gospel is to tell God about the person. All right? So we have one Sunday... We have one sermon about that, praying for your one. And then last week, the second step, all right, suppose you're already praying. Now, how many of you are already praying for your one? Raise your hand. Honestly, 
you're praying for your one. Okay? Praise God. Ang, 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 ang happy ani ba is that, you know, you're praying for your one, and then grace kasi mahana, imong one, imong rodeng tupad. So, you are sakibaw. Kunya, ikaw po nag-pray, nagsige mag-pray sa inyong selves. Wow. Have you found your one? Okay? Somebody, somebody messaged me last week, Pastor Bak, I found my one. And you're invited. Huh? One, you're invited. Lahi day nga one, yung nakitaan. Magminyo na siya. Hindi, uh, mao, ito akong ipangita. Okay? We're talking about your one, the one that you will share the good news of God's love to. Someone that you want to save. Someone that you want to experience everlasting life with Christ. So, the second step is you care for that person. Okay? And what was our lesson? Can you still remember a lesson last Sunday? Remember the four friends who helped their paralyzed friend come to Christ. And that's one way to share. Alright? I mean, to care. Okay? Other people cannot reach Jesus on their own. In fact, almost every one of us cannot do that on our own. That's why somebody has to help us. All right? And then, we go to the share part. That's our lesson today. Right? Share. How am I going to share the gospel to my one? So that's our lesson. And today, we're going to study the story about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. In Acts chapter 8, verse 26 to 40, this is a long narrative. Okay, just want to give you some background about this chapter. Now, in Acts chapter 2, if you remember, in Acts chapter 2, that's the birth of the church, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit came, filled the 150 people worshiping, and there was just power. After that, more people became Christians. In fact, on that particular day, 3,000 were added to the church. St. Peter preached his first sermon, and because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, he preached one sermon and 3,000 got saved. All right? Some pastors today preach 3,000 sermon, only one saved. Okay? That's the difference between having the power of the Spirit and having no power at all. So when Peter was empowered by the Holy Spirit, 3,000 got saved. So what happened the church of our Lord Jesus Christ started to grow. All right? More and more Jews are coming to Christ, accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But guess what happened in Acts chapter 8? Okay, look at this. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. A great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. Now take note, as of this time, the church was just concentrated in Jerusalem. All right, so far everything is happening in Jerusalem. All right, that's where Jesus died. All right, that's where he resurrected. And that's where the first church met. In fact, those of you who will be going to the Holy Land, one of the sites that you'll be visiting and we've visited is the house in which the church was, according to tradition, the church was uh, established. You know? The hundred people were gathered there, the disciples together with Mary and the apostles. So you will visit this house. It's, it's right in the heart of Jerusalem. Okay? And, and going back to Acts chapter 8, what happened is that persecution started. And guess who was the main persecutor? Any idea? Who was the main persecutor of the church? Saul, yes, who became Paul, yes. So take note, this is 8, chapter 9. That's when Saul became a believer. He became Paul. So in chapter 8, Saul is still the bad guy. Right? He was persecuting the church. He was dragging people from their houses, bringing them to prison. And you know what happened because of the persecution? Notice what happened there. The church were scattered all throughout the region of Judea and Samaria. You see, the devil was the cause of the persecution. The devil hates when, when people come to Christ. All right? I, I've been telling you, remember? When somebody invites you to church because, you, because the devil knows that you will be listening to the gospel and the gospel can change your life, 
The gospel can change the direction of your life. You know what the devil does? He makes so many, you know, bad shots. Like suddenly, sakitan kagtian. Suddenly, mag migraine ka. Suddenly, something came up. All right, and and it's true. I mean, somebody told me, Pastor, tino juga Pastor. Kaya ako invite last week. Di ko kana day kagidis minuri ako o sarawa manggawas yung Domingo. See, so I've been telling you, you know, when 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 people start coming to Christ, the devil hates it, and so he makes all sorts of bombardments. Right, but you know, the devil can never stop the church. Amen? Because the more the church was persecuted, look at this, the more the church scattered. So the Christians are scattered everywhere. So what happened? People were telling Jesus. People were telling about Jesus, about their friends, and everyone. And notice verse 5. This, this is where Philip comes in. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Now, by the way, sometimes you're confused. Look at the map. Okay, remember, where were they situated? In Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem, can you see the Jerusalem there? There's a star in the middle. And Samaria is going up. And then you would ask, Pastor, if it's going up, then why does the Bible say they went down? <laughs> Any explanation? I've explained this before. Usually, the Bible says they went down to Samaria, to Galilee. Why? Yes, because Jerusalem is a mountain. Yes. If you go to Jerusalem, it's high up there. So everything else are just down. So that's why when the Bible writes, like, Jesus went down to Galilee. <laughs> All right? Because Jerusalem is a very high altitude. It's a high place. It's a valley. You know, not a valley, but a plateau above, above mountains. And so, they went down to Samaria. Basically, they went north. So, Philip went to Samaria. And notice what the Bible says. Preach Christ to them. Multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. To say it simply, brethren, there was spiritual revival in Samaria. People's lives were changed. All right? As Philip was preaching the gospel in Samaria, revival happened. Suddenly, bad husband became good. Children were no longer rebellious to their parents. See? Those who were into all sorts of, of, of vices, they repented from their sins. See? That's what it means to experience a miracle. All right? That's what it means to experience the Spirit of God. All right? You've experienced freedom from bondages, freedom from all sorts of evil that is trying to, to, you know, to enslave you, right? So that's what's happening in Samaria because the gospel, because Christ was preached there, the demons were all scattered as well, <laughs> right? So good things were happening in Samaria. Now, let's jump to verse 26. So please... Turn your so Bibles now to verse 26 because this is where we want to focus our story. Our story will not happen in Samaria. Okay? Now, in our lesson today, again, we're going to talk about the encounter of Philip. Philip, not the apostle Philip, but Philip the deacon. One of those seven deacons uh, commissioned by the church together with Stephen. You remember in Acts chapter 6. So, Philip was a deacon, but he was a gifted preacher. He was a gifted evangelist. So he was good with preaching the word, right? Now, God took him from Samaria so that he can meet this Ethiopian eunuch. Now, this, this encounter with the eunuch, listen, is very crucial. Okay, I want you to listen, pay attention. This must happen, I would say, this is really orchestrated by God. Because according to church traditions, the conversion of this eunuch, you know, this eunuch coming to Christ is responsible for the Christianity in the continent of Africa. 
If you visit Africa, they have a they have a different strand of Christianity. It's called Coptic Christians. It's neither Catholic nor Protestant. It's not Orthodox. They're called the Coptic Christians. It's a different strand. It's a different variety of Christian. You know, sometimes we only know about two kinds of Christians, right? Whether you're a Catholic or ang uban may Catholic unsa maka di ka Catholic unsa ka born again or portis o poor kay kag taste portis <laughs> all right but i tell you when you when you go to the world there are more christians than you ever know right so there are greek orthodox they are a different strand see so in the world if if you if you try to look at christianity there's really four branches you know there's the protestants the Catholics, of course, Philippines, so many Catholics, but if you go to Europe, so many Protestants. Uh, what else? Uh, Russia and, and, and the, the, the East, they are called the Orthodox churches, the Christian Orthodox churches. And then there are smaller brands of churches in Africa called the Coptic Christians. And according to tradition, these Christians came from this Ethiopian eunuch that we are going to study today. All right? So, let's begin with the first lesson. How am I going to share the gospel to my one? All right? So, we will just pick up the lesson from the narrative, you know, as, as we pass the narrative and let's see some important principles to learn. But the first principle to learn is this. Be sensitive to the Spirit's prompting. Are you aware that the Holy Spirit is always prompting us? to do something. Are you aware of that? See, the Holy Spirit is the life force of the Christian. Amen? Before the Spirit was given, what, what, was, the, what was the attitude? What was the, the life of the church or the Christian before the Spirit came? Anybody? Fear, yes. They were just hiding, right? They were just hiding there. They were, they were afraid. But you know, the moment the Holy Spirit was given, the Holy Spirit came to the church and rest on every Christian, suddenly those fearful, terrified Christians became bold Christians, daring Christians. No wonder that some Roman Gentile historians would say, this Christian, quote-unquote, is driving the world upside down. Amen? It's like, we're changing history. Why? Because of the Holy Spirit. But we have to be sensitive. All right? Now, where do I get this principle? Look at verse 26. Now, an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. An angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south. Remember, where is Philip now at this point? He is in Samaria, north. All right, because of the persecution. And, and he's doing great. There was great revival happening in Samaria. Philip was successful. You know, he was preaching the word and people were listening and people's lives were changed. But you know what? God has some different plans. <laughs> Have you experienced God changing your plans? <laughs> right? Was it easy? <laughs> no, right? Because, you know, we made all these plans and, and, and we're set with these plans and we're all, all for these plans and then suddenly God changes plans and we say, no, Lord, no. No, no. Okay na yung kayo ni Lord. Sakto na yung ni Lord. Ayaw na pangilabot, Lord. I mean, Philip could, could have said those words. Why? Because things were doing great in Samaria. Multitudes were coming. Miracles were happening. It's like, Ingon mo si Philip yung mga Lord. Ay nalang ko hilap din din. Lord, si, si Pedro na lang. Lord, si, si Pedro or si, si Juan, Lord. Wat pag ibuhat. Busy kayo to his ministry, Lord. See? But you know what? The, the Holy Spirit through the angels says, Arise, go toward the south, along the road which goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is, what? This is desert. So it's like, the Holy Spirit was pulling Philip from the comfort of his successful ministry. Asa sa disyerto. 
Alright? Walay sibilisasyon dito. Okay? So let, let me show you the map again. So remember, they were in Acts chapter 8, they were in Jerusalem and then because of persecution, they were all scattered. So Philip went to Samaria. Alright? And then suddenly God changed plans because God has His own plans. Amen? God's ways are higher than our ways. Alright? So the, the angel said to Philip, Philip, go down, go south. Not even in a city, but in a road that leads to the desert. Why is that? All right? Why, why do you think the Holy Spirit would want Philip to be in the desert? All right? Why? Okay, let's go to the second point. Okay, so the first one is be sensitive. Now, before I go to the second point, a very important thing. The reason why most of the time we Christians end up not in the best plan of God in our lives. Listen, because we are not sensitive. Okay? God has been telling us, God has been showing so many signs, God has been leading us, God has been leading you to the right pages in the scripture, devotions, songs, messages from the pastor. And because our lives are so busy with our own kingdoms. We're not getting the direction. And then, and then when we come to a wall and literally drive ourselves in the wall and then we say, it hurts, and then we, we yell at God, Lord, why? I know, man, Lord. Kung ako si Lord, masaka akong buhaton, duklon yung kan ako. Say, Lord, Lord, ka dyan. Sige, nabit ako ni Moog, sulti. You know? All the circumstances in your life, those were already my sign. Di ba? I've been telling you, the direction is there, not there. But because, see? Because we are, okay, here's our problem. Our problem is not that we are humans, because we are all humans. Our problem is that sometimes we are too human than we should. We have to understand that we are also spiritual beings. Are you aware? We are spiritual beings. In fact, which came first? The human? I mean the physical or the spiritual? And then when God created everything, which came first? Which really came from God? The flesh or the spirit? It's the spirit. Remember? The flesh was just ca coming from the ground. Remember, God took some dirt. Okay, just to remind you and me. Listen, some of us feeling, feeler, kita kinsata. Remember where you came from, where I came from. Igna yung tapad, dirt. That's the literal word in Genesis chapter 2. God took some dirt from the ground, shaped it, but then the Bible says, he breathed into it his breath of life. And what happened? It became a living being. See? Listen, your life, my life came from God. <laughs> okay? A lot of people today ignore God, not knowing we all came from God. So, God created us as a spiritual being. All right? Encapsulated us with the flesh. But then the problem is that most of us, our focus is just on our physical. See? What we eat, what we drink. That's why Jesus said in, in John, you know, Matthew chapter 6, you always worry about what you eat, what you drink, what you wear. Di ba na mo yung problem? Madugay simba kung siya kong sulubun. Wapakabot simbahan, asa ta mga on. Di ba? Pag inaumang simba, nag, 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 naglalis na. Kaya asal kita mga on. See, we always, o siya kung sulubon ka ron, ang atong, you know, kung saan ay tawag, ana, ato ang OT, uh, outfit of the day. Kung saan may atong outfit of the day. So, di ko kasimba kay wa ibag pong outfit. See? And we are worried about the physical and we are not conscious that the Spirit is leading us. Amen? Now, what happened here with Philip is that yes, Philip was he was used by God, there were miracles happening, but he was sensitive to the Spirit. Brethren, be sensitive. Alright? A lot of times, 
you and I might have missed some accidents. We, ha- we might skip some problems had we listened carefully to God. But we are not. See? Be sensitive because you just don't know what the Spirit wants you to do in that particular day. In this particular day, the Spirit told Philip, Philip, go back, go down south. All right? So, second point, submit to the Spirit's leading. So, once you, you've sensed the Spirit's leading, you know that this is really coming from the Spirit because in my prayer, this is what God prompted me. The verses that I've been reading, this is all leading to this. And when I spoke to the pastor or to some artists or kuyas in the church, they're also talking about it. So, so the church is talking about it. The Bible is talking about my prayer life. So in other words, God is already telling me. And so we should listen. Now, what should, what should we do when, when God, be, you know, is quite obvious already? Submit. Notice this. He rose and went. Simple. <laughs> Simple guy. <laughs> There's persecution in Jerusalem. He went to Samaria. Preached the gospel there. And then when God says, go back. So he rose and went. And behold. So now, so just imagine this. He's from Samaria. He traveled back down. Going down to south. Right? Basically, if, if you look at it in in a geographical level, he actually went up because in order for you to cross from, from the north to the south, you have to climb up Jerusalem and then go down, right? So he rose and went, and behold, the man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of Ethiopians. All right, so let's talk about this man. He's from Ethiopia. All right, now, we are reading... The Bible, which, is, which was written 2,000 years ago. So, Ethiopia 2,000 years ago is quite different from our Ethiopia and the map today. If you look at the map today, if you Google, Ethiopia is just a small portion, a small nation in Africa. But back then, in the ancient world, Africa, and I don't know, we have Africans here. <laughs> Africa is just known for two Names before. Either you are from Egypt or you are from Ethiopia. All right? In fact, in the Old Testament, Ethiopia is, it, 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 it is called the land, the land of Cush. All right? Cush. In fact, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge kingdom. You know? Long before there were other nations, it was just Ethiopia. And now, if you look at the map, it's just a small portion. But during that time, this place was a massive kingdom. And if, if you remember during the time of King Solomon, remember, there's the queen of Sheba who visited Solomon in his temple. Now, guess where queen of Sheba came from? Ethiopia. All right? So, we're talking here of a person, of a man of great power and authority. See? A eunuch of great authority under, all right, there's, there's a special name there, Candace, the queen of Ethiopians. Now, a lot of people thought that the queen of Ethiopia's name is Candace. That's why some girls were named Candace, all right? But actually, Candace is not a name. It's a title. It's like Pharaoh, right? Pharaoh, you, Pharaoh is not a name. For the Romans, if, if you're a Roman, then you're a jar, right? Or Caesar. Okay, Caesar is not a name, it's a title, right? So, Candace is a title of the queen mother of the Ethiopians, right? And, and this eunuch was under, he, you know, he's responsible for what? He's in charge of all her treasury, okay? Now, can you imagine now? who this person is. So, I want you to understand why God bothered to remove Philip from a successful ministry in Samaria and bring him to the desert so that he could meet this man. Because this man is no ordinary man. You know? He's a man of influence. All right? 
He's a eunuch. He's a man of influence. He's rich because he's in charge of all the treasury of, of the queen mother of the Ethiopians. And one thing, notice this. Why is he in Jerusalem? Notice what the Bible says. And had come to Jerusalem to worship. To worship. So this is not a bad person. All right? He's a worshiper of God. All right? And he was returning. So we have to understand, friends, that during that time, there were some Gentiles who converted to Judaism. Remember, during the glories of Israel, during the time of David and, and Solomon, a lot of kingdoms in the world would visit Israel to see the splendor, you know? The glory of God was shining in the nation of Israel. See? That's before God punished them. So, during those times, a lot of people, a lot of Gentiles, not Jews, also converted to Judaism. Alright? And some scholars are saying, this Ethiopian eunuch could be one of those who got converted. See? He's an, from Ethiopia, he's, he's an African, but he is now a believer of the God. He's a worshiper of the God of the Jews. Are you following? And he was now returning back to Ethiopia. Now question, why would God want Philip to meet this Ethiopian eunuch? And you know already the, the answer. So that Philip could share the gospel to this eunuch. You say, he needs to hear the gospel? I mean, he's already worshiping God. Now I tell you, listen, here's something else that you need to know. This Ethiopian eunuch represents, listen, represents to a great majority of people in the world today. People who are religious. He was religious. He came to Jerusalem. People who know God. He knows God because he comes to worship. Do you know people, do you have friends who know Jesus? All our friends know Jesus. I think so. All Filipinos, I would say 99%, even Muslims, know about Jesus. So I would say 90% of Filipinos know Jesus. They worship in a church, regardless of what church it is. It's a Catholic church, a Baptist church. They worship a Christian church. Question, are they all saved? No. The same thing as this Ethiopian eunuch. See, he was rich, he was a worshiper of God, he wanted to know God, but he is not yet saved, all right? He is not yet saved, why? Because he has not yet received Christ as his Lord and Savior. The same thing, listen, the same thing as the majority of Filipinos, the same thing of the majority of our friends, people in our lives. They all know Jesus. I assume they all go to church on a Sunday, regardless of what church. And so sometimes we assume that because they know Jesus, they go to a Christian church, then probably they are saved. All right? Now, let me add to that. Let me add to that. Not only is this man religious, worshiper of God, notice this, verse 28. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. Oh, mas labaw pag yun eh. Dili lang siya religious, dili lang siya worshiper ni God, nagbasa pag yung Bible. Di ba? Now, I know a lot of, a lot of your friends go to church, but they, they read the Bible. Now, this one reads the Bible. Now, why is it that God, now, I want you to see the map because Philip is, is in Samaria. Now, the eunuch, this is the the trail of the eunuch from Jerusalem, he goes back. Padong siya mauli is Africa, but he has, he has to go through Gaza because that's the place. By, by the way, the same Gaza, kanang Gaza Strip, karon, going on in Israel, that's the same Gaza, same place, you know, as the present day Gaza, you know? All right? So, Philip has to meet him on the road. Why? Because this was an appointment from God. I believe so. 
Friends, what can we learn from this situation? One, that God always takes the initiative to save people. God always takes the initiative. All right? When I got saved, I was looking for Jesus. I thought I was the one who found Him. But as I grew in my study of the Word, I realized that it was God who found me first. And my story is the same as your story. You thought you found Jesus, that's why you're here? No, He found you. Amen? We were all lost. Amen? I was lost. I'm sure some of you are still lost. A lot of our friends are still lost. See? And it is God. In this story, we find that it is God who is really looking, searching. In fact, the Bible says, remember Luke 19.10, Jesus said, the Son of Man came to what? To seek and to save the lost. Amen? Praise God that I was found by God. Praise God that you're found by God. See? Now, this is the significance of this story, friends. That God always takes the initiative. That God is always the one working for our salvation. All right? But second truth Listen, this is equally important. Second truth, you have to understand that yes, this man, at the end of the story, this man got saved. But let me tell you why he is saved. Not only that God was seeking after him, you have to understand, he himself also sought God. Alright? You have to understand, they all match together. Alright? Yes, God is seeking after you. The question, are you seeking after God? See? Because this man was also a God seeker. In fact, we don't know, but I would assume he's been visiting Jerusalem for many years. But it wasn't the time yet. Now is the time. So after many years of visiting Jerusalem, finally, God cornered him you know, in the desert road. By bringing Philip. So God used Philip. So God removed Philip from Samaria, brought Philip to the desert so that Philip would understand what it means to be saved. That salvation is not about religion. Salvation is not about going to church. Salvation is not about reading the Bible. Salvation starts with a relationship with Christ. Amen? So he was reading the Bible. Then, notice this, verse 29. I want you to again notice, the Spirit is always active. Then the Spirit said to Philip, diba? Do you think ang, 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 ang Holy Spirit is going whisper? Murag buang si Philip? Murag inana to? Or do you think the Spirit simply moved through his heart? It could be, I don't know. I mean, the Spirit is sovereign. He could be whispering or He could just be prompting your heart. I mean, di ba, sometimes nakakay ka na gitawag ni mo og, sometimes you have this gut feeling. And sometimes that gut feeling is actually the Holy Ghost feeling. Di ba? Kada bang you're about to do something and then suddenly your heart starts to beat faster because probably you're about to do something that you will regret someday. See? So it's the Spirit telling you, wrong path, warning, warning, see? And so the Spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran. Timani, si Philip, galakaw ra siya chariot. So, iyon for this Philip, Lord, grabiha po ni mo, saan gusto ni mo ni mag-runner na po daan eh? So Philip ran to him and notice, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. See, so this man, you could say this man was religious because he went to Jerusalem to worship and this man was really studying the Word of God. See? So, kung winkag marks of a Christian, check. Goes to church, check. Reads the Bible, check. See? Check, check, check. But not yet saved. See? So, this is the illustration. So, Philip went, all right? So let's review our steps first before we forget. First one, we have to be sensitive to the Spirit's prompting. 
remind yourself, I am not just a human being, I'm also a spiritual being. So I, we have to have times to really reflect. Do you have quiet moments? Do you have time to just sit down, you know, turn off phones, wala tanan, and then just stare at something? Okay? You need that. Especially in our days today, especially in our times nga, common kain yung kitawag na to og mental health. Diba? Uso na kain na term. Ang mental health. Diba? Hasta ang mga iro, kinanglag mental health karon. Hasta ang mga irig. Kay mas oh, ma-depress ma- ko, no? Mas gasto na ba sila? Kay sa ato. Okay? Kay kung ma-depress mo, magpa-counseling mo na mo, Pastor Libre man, ma-depress yung iring, di mako katabang anak. <laughs> so, ato yung mag-vet. See? So, in other words, friends, we are now in a generation that a lot of people are mentally stressed. Actually, I don't call it mental stress. It's actually a soul stress. It's not a problem with your mind. It's a soul problem. And you know what? Jesus is the healer of our souls. Amen? He's the healer of our souls. So, so here's a man reading the Word. Okay? Now let's go to the third step. So, be sensitive, submit, and then set the stage for a conversation. All right? Set the stage. In other words, you are now, you are now surrendering to the Spirit. You are now allowing the Spirit to lead you. And the Spirit, of course, because the Holy Spirit's goal is always to share the good news. It is always the Holy Spirit's goal to save your loved ones, I tell you. Wala gudnay plano ang Holy Spirit ng imong loved one maimperno. It's very clear in the Bible, God not wanting anyone to perish but to have everlasting life. See? It's the desire of God that your loved ones be saved. But here's one thing that God will not do. God will never coerce anyone to believe in Him. He will not coerce anyone. Alright? He would just touch you. Kung magpabungol-bungol ka na, sorry, Nga nung naimpirno ka, nabungol man ko. Ang imura yung pagkabungol may nakapaimpirno, kaya wa na mino. See? But God will never force you. See? Magparamdam ra na si Lord. <laughs> Alright? But He will never force you. Alright? So that's why we have to be sensitive, we have to submit, and then set the stage for a conversation. Now, notice what happened. So, so Philip ran to him, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and here's the setting the stage. Do you understand what you're reading? Simple ra kayo, no? Ang iyang intro. Nakasabot pa ka. Okay, nagbasa man siya o Isaiah. Now, change the story. What if nagbasa to siya newspaper? Simple. If you're Philip, pinsan na po'y nagbuwag. <laughs> nga nung kana may question, kinaman siya sa entertainment nga portion sa, sa news. Okay? Kinsan na po yung nag-break up? Okay? Nag-uli na ba si Bea o si Domes? <laughs> Curious po ko. Alright? You can start there. P- pwede na na, Pastor. Yes. Alright? You know, sharing the gospel doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to know Genesis to Revelation to share Jesus. Amen? Just start a conversation. Here, a young question is, do you understand what you're reading? Again, it depends, no? Kung, kung ang imong kaistorya is ang yang, okay, example lang, ang, ang, ang imo ang one, you know, ang imong one, yang problem is, you know, nag siya sa iya ang boyfriend or girlfriend. Then you start there. Alright? Because I believe, I truly believe, brethren, listen, with all my heart, all problems, any financial, relational, emotional, all problems can all boil down to one solution, Jesus. See? God knew that already. See? God knew that already. Whatever is your problem, whether it's marital issues, financial, physical, whatever it is, there's only one solution. Mauna, nga kaming pastor, bisang pag, wak ko kibaw sa problem, kibaw na ko sa solution. Wa ko kibaw sa problem, bro. I know what you need. 
So when people come to me, I'm already prepared because I know what people need. Even though people think that they need money, they need love, they need acceptance, see? They need all of this, but all of these are just what? Superficial, the real skin deep need is that they need Jesus. And because they don't have Jesus in their lives, that's why they all have this all sorts of what? Symptoms. Everything else that people experience today are just symptoms. See, depression is a symptom. All problems of people are just symptoms. The real root cause is that they have a broken relationship with their maker. Once this broken relationship is restored, those symptoms will just solve by themselves. Amen? See? So, you start with a conversation. And, and, and he said, how can I unless someone guides me? All right? So, so if, you're, if you're Philip and now you understand, wow, nintubag. Do you understand? Now, what could be the possible answer of the the eunuch. I don't know you. Who are you? <laughs> Why are you talking to me? No? I mean, that's the end of the story. But, how can I unless someone guides me? So that means, uy, nanay opening. See? The person is willing. See? Now, friends, if you start a conversation and the person closes the door, what say you ni Jesus? Just, Scratch the dust from your shoes. In other words, okay lang. See? It's not your loss. See? At least you made a start. So, maybe next time. But here, the eunuch answered, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. So, this is a good situation, right? An opportunity. So, when Philip was talking to this man, I'm sure, okay, realizing, probably, I would assume, you know, because he's a eunuch, and you know, remember, he's an official, he's parang the second hand to the queen mother of Ethiopia. So, probably, ang yang gisul obtanan looks very intimidating. And I'm sure Philip was intimidated. But you know, in the heart of Philip, Lord, you know, he's a dignitarian, he's an official, he's from other nation. But this is nothing, Lord. Because after all, this man is still going to hell. <laughs> no matter how dignified he may look, no matter how rich he may look, no matter how religious he may look, but inside, if there is no Jesus, this man is still going to hell. So for Philip, I should not be intimidated. My goal here is to tell this person about Jesus. All right? And this man asked Philip to come up and sit with him. All right? Now, friends, very important principle from Philip Peter. Okay, 1 Peter 3.15. Notice this. But in your heart, in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Notice this. Always, all right? Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you. Now, this is where we need to do our part as Christians. As Christians, we have to be ready. Are you listening? We have to be ready anytime so that when someone, when a person that God has already prepared, I'm sure it was God who is preparing the heart of this eunuch. Okay? Okay? But God cannot literally go down and tell the eunuch, believe in me. So God was preparing the eunuch spiritually, but it was, it was Philip who is going to plant the seed. All right? Now, this is where you and I must equip ourselves. Prepare to give an answer to everyone who asks you. Ask you about what? To give the reason for the hope that you have. When you claim, you, when you claim as a Christian and you're going to heaven, and people say, huh? Assuming ko nimo, may malangit, you guys sure ka? Pariharam nta? Lagi malangit, lagi ko. Oh, so be ready to give an answer. How do you answer that? How how can you explain that you're going to heaven and that person is going to hell? I mean, hello, kanto na deka? 
Di ba? Mamunay sulti. Kinsa may nakato kaning balik? Wala. Well, except one. Jesus. <laughs> he went there and He came back and he, that's why He's telling us. Alright? So, but we have to do it with gentleness and respect. Amen? When we share the gospel, we have to tell them the truth, but the Bible says you have to do it with gentleness and respect. Not in a judgmental way, not in a condemning way, but plainly telling the good news respectfully. All right? Now, the place in the scripture which he read was this. So, this is the Bible, the verse that he was reading in Isaiah. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before its shearer is silent. So, he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Now, question. Can somebody say his, 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 his? So the eunuch, that's the question of the eunuch. The eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or some other man? So it's, the eunuch is asking now questions. So this is very important that you can answer. Say, if you were Philip, no? Kinsa may ipasabot ni Isaiah himself or another person? If you're Philip, what are you going to do? Call a friend. <laughs> Pastor Mark, kinsa may ipasabot ni? Kinsa may ipasabot na? Kaya istorya din ko ng Pastor Mark, nag ko answer kaya. You can do that. In fact, a lot of you are doing that. Di ba? mo text dai mo pastor mark na ko kay sir karon can you please answer this gipangutan ako ani so tali dali po kong tubag see it's okay you can do that but it would have been better if you can answer that person directly amen from the bible see so so what's the answer to this kinsa may gipasabot ni prophet isaiah because here isaiah is talking about a man who is sorrowful who is fierce okay who is bruised who is inflicted, who is punished by God, not for his own sin, but for the sins of others. So now, the, the man is asking, is he talking about himself? Alright? Now that leads us to the fourth. So you have already set the stage for a conversation. You are now talking. You are now conversing. Now you are ready to share the gospel. Share the gospel as biblically as possible. Alright? Then, notice verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. See that? That's the sharing of the gospel. See? This man was a worshipping, you know, a worshipping of the God of the Jews. He reads the scripture. One thing he doesn't know. He doesn't know about Jesus. He doesn't know about the Savior. See? So, Philip opened his mouth. Alright? Beginning at this scripture, he preached Jesus. Brethren, we need to train ourselves to open our mouths in preaching Jesus. Because sometimes we open our mouths and Jesus is not the one that will come out. Okay? Ang mga chismis, ang mga libak, no? ang mga criticism. See? But... Philip opened his mouth and what or who came out from the mouth of, of Philip? He was preaching Jesus to this person. See? He was telling, you know what? That man you're reading in Isaiah, that's the Savior. That's the Messiah. That's what he did. All right? He preached Jesus from the book of Isaiah. Now, quickly, I have, you know, if you notice in your sermon note, you know, I put there sandwich to the to points four and five. Quickly, three contents of the gospel. Alright? Three contents of the gospel. How can I share the gospel? I don't know, Pastor. Alright? Now, let me just explain this to you as simply as possible. Alright? When you share the gospel, you ask, Pastor, what's the gospel? The gospel is the good news. What's the good news? How am I going to share the gospel? Alright? You start with the case. On some ng case, kaso, problem. There's a case. Alright, what's the case? 
that man sinned against God and must pay everlasting punishment in hell. All right? That's how you start. No? If, if you don't know how to share the gospel, now I am actually teaching you. You start with the case. When you share the gospel, you start with the bad news. Now, let me use an illustration that we use for the walkthrough. Now, if you're attending this seminar, you are now ready to become an usher or a counselor. So, walk through well because you're listening to this. Because this is what you will share. Okay? Now, look at the illustration. Okay? This is the bridge illustration. Man is on that side. God is on that side. Because of sin, there's a gap. There's a separation. And man tries to go back to God or to run away from God. But either way, he goes to hell. Man is separated and is separate. Man has sinned and separated from God. And as a result, man will suffer eternal consequences. All right? That's, that's all in the Bible. All right? But again, let's just say the focus of Philip is Isaiah. So where do you find that in Isaiah chapter 53? Oh, look at what Isaiah wrote. All we, like sheep, have what? Gone astray. See, we are, we are rebellious. We are sinners. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So it's talking about our rebellion. It's talking about our iniquities. Look at verse 5. He was wounded for our what? Our transgressions. That's my sin. He was bruised for our iniquities. See, that's the case. You have problem. I have problem. We have transgressed against God. We have iniquities against God. And verse 5. Five, it says, the ch chastisement for our peace was upon him. What is chastisement? That's another word for punishment. See? So there is punishment because of our sin. All right? And, and because of our sin, we have grief, we have sorrows, and we are stricken, smitten by God, afflicted. What are those words? Stricken, smitten, afflicted. They all mean one thing. God hates us see, because of sin. See? So now, your idea of God changes because after all, this is what the devil wants the world to know. God loves you so much. God loves you. See, And that's what the devil is preaching in the world. That's why a lot of people, a lot, even Christians, it's okay for them as they continue to sin because what I'm hearing is this, God loves me. You're only hearing one side of it. See? No. God hates you when we sin. God cannot love a person with sin. See? The only person that God can truly love is when that person has Jesus Christ in his heart. See? But when God looks at the world, it's not love. It's hatred. But that's not what the world is hearing. What the world is hearing is that God so loved the world. Well, it's in the Bible, God so loved the world, but it doesn't say God so loved the world while they enjoy sin. No, it says God so loved the world that He gave. See? But the word that is spreading in the world today is that no matter what I do, I'm a sinner, God still loves me. Wrong. See? Man need to understand that Every time I live in sin, I am living opposite to the will of God. That I am in great danger. See? That as I continue in my sinful life, I am in danger of the fires of hell because God hates sin. And how do you know God hates sin? Look at what happened to Jesus. That's how God hated sin. God inflicted all His anger upon you and me and put it upon His Son. See, if you say that sin is not that bad, then Jesus probably would not be suffering when he was dying on the cross. But that's exactly what this verse is saying. We esteem him stricken, smitten, afflicted by God. Why would God afflict? Why would God punish his own son? Because of his hatred towards sin. And the world today thinks that it's okay if I live in sin. No, no, it's not okay. So start with the case. Sin, 
God hates sin. All right? And, and there's another unbiblical phrases that we always hear. You know, God loves the sinner, hates the sin. You don't find that in the Bible. See? You cannot separate the sin and the sinner. All right? I don't know who made that up. It's not in the Bible. It's not true that God loves the sinner and hates the sin. No. God hates the sin as well as the sinner. See? That's why there's punishment. See? That's why there's warning. Otherwise, if God doesn't hate sin, then He would not warn His people. Otherwise, if God does not hate sin, then God would not have invented hell. But why is there hell? Because that's the justice for people who think that they can, they can run away from God. Now, the second point, the second, second content of the gospel. So first, you talk about sin, punishment, and then the cross. Okay? And this is the, really the heart of the gospel. The cross. That's why in our church, the cross, that's the biggest thing here. Why? Because that should remind us that that's the good news. The good news is that because Jesus died on that cross, I'm not going to be punished by the Father. See? All the hatred of God towards me, it was on Him. See? That's the good news. See? Only Jesus' death on the cross bridged the gap. All right? So I want you to understand, this is how you share the gospel. Okay? You have to tell people, yes, you, you are not a criminal, you, you, you know, you're not that bad, but listen, all of us sin. Regardless of the gravity of our sin, we are all sinners, and we are all going to face the judgment of God, but Jesus took that judgment. Amen? That's the good news. Jesus died on the cross to pay for the penalty of our sin. Where do we find that in Isaiah? Again, look at what the Bible says. The Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. You see that? Isn't that love? That's love. See? What's love there? The love there is not God, that God is just telling you, okay, your sins are forgiven. Okay, run them. say, no. Love is that God inflicted the punishment not on you, but on Him. That's love. So where is God's love? God's love is found on the cross. Every time we look at the cross, we find the love of God there. What kind of love? I'm supposed to suffer. But because of God's love, somebody took the suffering. See? By His stripes, we are healed. Amen? By the death of Christ, all our burdens are healed. But He was wounded. Take note. Why was He wounded? For our transgressions. He was bruised, take note, for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment for our peace was on Him. See? That's the gospel, brethren. Understand that. That's what Jesus did for you and for me. Alright? That's the good news. So don't ever think that, you know, when you sin and then God will simply, you know, pasaylo ako, Lord, kinakasak ko, Lord. Oh, sige, okay. It's not that easy. For God to say, I forgave you, somebody died on the cross. That's why every time you sin, think of the cross. Every time you're about to commit a sin, think about the cross. Because that's the cause of your sinning and my sinning. Every time we commit a sin, think about the face of Jesus dying on that cross. Because that's the cause of of your sin and my sin. He who has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteem Him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. You see that? That's the gospel, brethren. All right? So the, you start with the case or the cause, which is sin, and then the cross, that's how Jesus solved it. Now, how does that become a good news? How does that become a good news? Well, it's not automatic. Okay, here's another thing that people don't understand. People thought that Jesus died on the cross for everyone. <laughs> Lump sum. Alright? No. Jesus' death on the cross is only, listen, it's only applicable to those who believe in Him. 
Amen? So everything He did, okay, everything He did, it's available by faith. But you have to come. Amen? You have to come to Him. See? You have to know Him because this is not just given to you without you asking for it. All right? That's why the third and most important is that there must be confession. There must be a response. All right? That I believe and confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. So, in order for this man, go back to the illustration. Diba? Asa tong direction sa man before, if you remember. Opposite side. So now, having known that Jesus died on the cross for him, the man repents from his sin. See? There is real agony. Okay? Kana bitong ning dawat kas ginoon niya, why tinuod sorrow sa imong sala? Then there's no genuine conversion there. Okay, wa makaka-appreciate. But kung naka-appreciate yung ka sa love ni God, ay magbasol yung ka. Ay, mag-anak ko yung ulawa di sa kong ipang buhat, Lord. Diba? I could not even thank Lord of what I've been doing. I mean, I've been enjoying it, but how terrible was the punishment? Magundang nakuha ni Lord. No? Di nakuha ni nga lifestyle, Lord. See? There is real repentance. See? You turn away from it. And then, you trust, you embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So, if you're going to finish the illustration, asa yun na padung ang tao? Back to God. See? Now, this is one thing I've learned from Edmund Chan's conference last, I mean, yesterday. The, the ultimate goal of redemption is intimacy with God. See? The purpose. Why God, why Jesus died on the cross? Sometimes you think, for me not to go to hell? Well, that's just a derivative. The real reason why God saved us so that we can be back with Him. Intimacy. See? Because on the first place, we were together until, until sin came. See? So, your destiny and my destiny is not for us to enjoy our dreams, live in paradise, you know, have all that we have. That's so worldly, demonic kind of life still. Selfish. The real life, real life, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. It's to be with Him. See? Reunited with God. Amen? Now, that brings us to the fourth, I mean, fifth, last. Okay? So, we have completed our five steps. On saang fifth? Solicit a response from your one. See? There has to be a response. Okay? Dili pwede nga hanging. Okay? Like, Jesus died on the cross, you know, for your sin. And yet, period. So, unya, masave na ko ana. Masaya kong buhaton. See? Every time the gospel is presented, there's always a question. What must I do? Remember, the jailer asked Paul, what must I do to be saved? Masay to bag ni Paul. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Acts 16.33. Okay? Peter. People were asking Peter, Peter, what must we do? On say tubag ni Peter, repent of your sins and be baptized and you will be saved. See? In other words, there should be a response. All right? Now, look at verse 36. Let's end the narrative. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Ingon ang eunuch, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Ko grabiya pastor, baptism dayon? Well, contrary to what we believe in the Bible, baptism and believing they usually happen at the same time. Kita ra may gadugay dugay actually. In the Bible, every time people believe put their faith in Christ, immediately they are what? They are baptized. Alright? Kita na may nagdugay-dugay. Okay? Because we complicate it. No. Baptism is simply an outward. Listen. Baptism is simply an outward sign of an inward reality. Alright? Baptism is to your faith in Jesus as to wedding or marriage to your love to your spouse. No? For example, Nay, na kay, na kay girlfriend, oh. okay, bigyan ka nga, okay, give me a nice name. A nice name. 
Oke. Okay. Hah? Oke. Okay. Ayun na lang. Sige, balik na lang ta ni Candice. Okay. Nanya yung batu-batu sa langit. Okay. Candice, I love you. Oh, di ba? Oh, really? Nya mingon si Candice nya, will you marry will you marry me? Oh, dili uy. Pero love tika. Okay? I mean, can you imagine that? Someone telling you the person loves you but then not willing to go through a wedding. Kaya nga naman, because I don't believe an, I don't believe anang mga minyo-minyo. I don't believe anang hello, ay na lang tanang believe-believe. No? Mas kamra ka, wag yun ay plano. Okay? Why? Because wedding, marriage, that seals your love. See? It's a covenant. See? It's a sacred act. The same with baptism. You say you believe in Jesus, yadi ka magpabaptize. It means you are not serious. Because in the Bible, it was very clear. Jesus said, Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Matthew 28, 19. Mark chapter 15, verse 16. Believe and be baptized and you shall be saved. That's what Jesus said. In other words, baptism must follow your believing. Why? Because it's your baptism that confirms nga kanang imong faith, which is nobody can see because it's in your heart. Your baptism confirms that there's insight happening. Alright? You get that? How will I know that you love me? Then you will marry me. So that's the same thing. Jesus would say, how will I know? How will people know that you truly believe in me? I'm willing to be baptized. That's why, pag ingon niya, uy, na may tubig. Alright? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Okay? Kay perhaps siguro, ganahan siguro si Philip nga, you know, hindi ito itong mag-baptism tang at to gito sa church, you know, makita ka, pero, si, practical lang po si Yunok, no? Ninyo, yun siya nga, Philip, basig din natin makita balik. May tubig na eh. Of course, kanal siguro ito, pero limpyo po itong kanal. Alright? Okay? Now, notice what happened. And he answered and said, okay, this is now the confession, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And you know what happened? So he commanded the chariots to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he baptized him. See? What an amazing thing, right? He was baptized right there. And I'm sure, remember, take note, he was an official. He was... Of course, if you're an official, dili ka siya rato oy. Na to siya iya ang iya ang si Termana. Yes, entourage. Okay, official man siya. So everyone saw, wala si sir. Nagpabunyag. Okay, bantay lang jud ka. <laughs> Ni queen. All right? Now, remember this, baptism is really a confirmation that you are serious with your faith. See? Because not everyone, not everyone will have themselves baptized. They say, I believe in Jesus, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved. But are you willing to be baptized? All right? So what happened here? Now when they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. Philip. And next verse, so that the eunuch saw him no more. It's okay. Wala na. Wala na siya thank you ni Philip. But notice how the verse ends. He went on his way rejoicing because he, he went home born again. See? He was saved. See? He, he went to Jerusalem as a religious man, but still lost. He came back as a new man. Why? Because Philip, Philip said yes to the Spirit. Can you imagine the story if Philip said no? <laughs> See? Then, there would have been no Coptic church now. <laughs> See, Ethiopia, if you visit Ethiopia now, they are a Christian nation. But take note, they are not Catholic nor Protestant. They are a different branch of Christians. But still, they worship Jesus Christ as their Lord. See, why? Because of this encounter. Because Philip 
was sensitive to the Spirit. Philip submitted to the Spirit. Philip set the stage for a conversation. He shared the gospel and solicited a response. See? Friends, it's your turn. Who knows? The person you're sharing could be the next mayor of the Cebu or the next governor of Cebu or the next president of the Philippines. Who knows? But the important thing is this. You share the gospel to your one. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this story. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are in the business of saving people. And you don't care who they are, whether they are high-class officials or just paralytic man, even as simple or as an outcast like a leper. But Lord, you are the God who wants to save everyone. But how can they be saved if no one will share to them the gospel? How can they know Jesus if no one will tell them about Jesus? Lord, use us. Thank you, Lord. May this message, Lord, truly convict us to commit ourselves to you. And one application of this message, Lord, perhaps maybe there are still some of us here who said, I believe in Jesus, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. But until now, you have not yet been baptized. Why? What's holding you? See, that's the only requirement for baptism, that you confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord, that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is your Savior. Brethren, do not delay. Listen. Submit to the Spirit's leading into your life. Because God is going to use you to save somebody else. Lord, help us to share to our one. In Jesus' name, Amen.